All right, welcome to Henderson Library's Home Edition. My name is Miss Carrie, and today we are talking about animal tales. Now, I thought it was pretty cool because my sister happens to have a company called Slytherin Science, and she lives in California, and she has so many snakes that I thought it'd be really cool to share some snake stories and then to go to her to get some information about real snakes and how some of the stories are true or not true or what parts of them are actually true. So our very first story is about St. Patrick. Now, St. Patrick lived in Ireland and he was fasting for 40, 40 days. And I'm gonna insert my own little part of the story. If I was fasting for 40 days, I would be very hangry. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. I'd be mad and grumpy and grouchy. And I think St. Patrick was also kind of mad and grouchy and grumpy because one day he got attacked by a snake. And instead of doing what a normal person do, like getting mad at the snake or getting the snake to go away, he decided he was going to just banish every single snake from Ireland. Every snake, he waved his staff and he sent them all out to sea. So again, he was a little hangry, maybe overreacted just a touch, but that's how the story goes, that he sent them all out to sea. And to this day, there are no snakes in Ireland. Now, I know that it's true that there actually aren't any snakes in Ireland, but what I'm not so sure about is why aren't there snakes in Ireland? And I'm hoping that my sister can tell us why there are no snakes and also maybe just give us some information on what snakes are in general and some of their general characteristics. Of course, snakes, the first thing we need to know about them is that they are reptiles, just like lizards, turtles, tortoises, and crocodilians. All these animals are vertebrates, which means they have bones and specifically they have a backbone or spine and they all have scales. One important thing to think about is that they are ectothermic, which is a kind of fancier name for cold blooded, which means that they cannot regulate their internal temperature like we can. If they're cold, they have to move their bodies somewhere warmer. If they're warm, they have to move their some, where themselves somewhere colder. So let's talk about snakes specifically. So I have here my friend Jeff, he is a gopher snake that I got from a rescue here in California about a year ago. His previous owners decided they no longer wanted to care for him, so they turned him over to a rescue and I got him. And he is one of my favorite snakes that I have. He is just super sweet and super calm. So let's talk about what makes a snake like Jeff a snake. The first thing is that they have very elongated bodies. You can tell they're very, very long and pretty thin. They also have no arms and no legs. They're limbless. And you can tell here they all are covered in scales. Snakes have kind of different types of scales. On their backs, they have overlapping scales. You can see how one kind of lays on top of another. And on their bellies here, if Jeff wants to show us, you can see that they have belly scoots or belly scales. They're a little bit smoother and they're kind of shaped like rectangles. They help them move around along the ground since they have no feet to walk on. Let's see. They also have ears. A lot of people don't think snakes have ears because they have no ear holes. If you can see on his head, you can't really see any ears, but he actually does have ears. They're just covered by his scales. So he kind of probably hears the world like this. If you're holding your hands on your ears and everything sounds a little funny, that's probably how he hears the world. They also have highly mobile jaws, or their bottom jaws specifically. A lot of people think that snakes can actually dislocate their jaw, which isn't quite true. We have, if you guys feel your chin, you can tell it's all fused together. There's bone the entire way around. Snakes just have a little opening in the front where their two jaws aren't completely fused so they can actually stretch them apart. Unlike us, we can't stretch our jaw apart to accommodate larger food items. Okay, so remember, like all reptiles, snakes here like Jeff are ectothermic or cold-blooded, which brings us to why there are no snakes in Ireland. And did St. Patrick really drive them off? Short answer is no. Looking at the fossil record, scientists have determined that there have never been any snakes in Ireland. They just have never been there. But why is that? To answer that, we have to look at the most recent ice age, which was about 10,000 years ago. During that time, Ireland was covered in ice. So it was way too cold for the snakes to live there. Jeff wants nothing to do with ice. Cause remember, he has to find somewhere warm if he gets too cold. 
and he can't do that if everything's covered in ice. So after the ice age, when the glaciers started melting and the ocean level started rising, it made Ireland become an island. Since it was an island, snakes could not swim across the oceans to get to the, the island of Ireland. <laughs> so there were never any snakes there. So unfortunately, St. Patrick did not banish the snakes. There just weren't any there to begin with. And then our next story is the story of Jormungand. Now this story you'll mirror have some characters that you're probably going to recognize, especially if you enjoy watching Marvel movies. So this is a story from Norse mythology. Jormungand was this giant snake that was actually one of Loki's three children. And Odin got kind of mad one day and threw Jormungand into the ocean. And Jormungand continued to grow and get bigger and bigger until he could encircle the entire earth. And he could put his own tail in his mouth. And I mean, that's just how big he was. So Jormungand and Thor, yeah, that Thor, have always been fated to fight it out. That's just kind of their destiny. In fact, one time Thor was fishing and he caught Jormungand and someone else cut the line because they didn't want to start Ragnarok, which in Norse mythology, Ragnarok is the story of basically how the earth is going to end. So they were not ready for Ragnarok, so they cut the line and sent Jormungand back into the ocean. Well, eventually Ragnarok does happen and Jormungand comes onto land and he rolls around and he creates so much havoc and he and Thor end up fighting to the death. Thor does end up slaying Jormungand, but he only makes it nine paces or nine steps away from the snake before Thor himself dies because of Jormungand's venom that he injected him with. I'm so glad you used the term venom instead of poison. A lot of people use them kind of interchangeably, like they're the same thing, but they're definitely very different things. An easy way to think of it is that poison is ingested and venom is injected. What that means is that poison has to be swallowed or ingested, which means eaten, and venom has to be injected. If you think of when you go to the doctor and you get a shot, that's an injection. It's basically putting it directly through your skin, through a wound, into your bloodstream. And that's what venom does. So we usually, when we think of venomous snakes, we think of rattlesnakes and cobras, those big scary snakes with their big fangs up front that inject venom into the, anything they bite. However, there are other snakes that are technically venomous, like this little guy here. This is Coffee, my son named him, and he is a hognose snake. He's still very young and very little, but he will stay pretty little his entire life. He is a hognose snake because let's see if we can get him up to the camera here. If you can see, he kind of has that upturned nose that kind of looks like a pig or a little hog. And he uses that to dig up and find some of his favorite prey items, which are frogs and toads. So like I said, he is venomous, but that doesn't mean dangerous. That's why I'm holding him. His venom really cannot do anything to people. It's only bad for small animals like his frogs and toads that he eats. So venomous does not always mean dangerous. Another animal that we can think of that is technically venomous but not dangerous is a bee. This guy's venom is about on the same level as a bee and unless you're allergic to it you're really not going to have any problem at all. <laughs> so yeah even if he were to bite me it wouldn't do anything to me but please don't bite me coffee. Oh, that was really cool. I'm so glad you told us about the venom and the poison. I know that that's a big deal. So our next story is about the black snake and the eggs. Now this one is actually an African uh, tale. And here's how it goes. So there's this chicken and she had 12 eggs. Every time she'd go off to do her little chicken business somewhere else, when she would to go eat or just do anything, she came back to her nest and an egg was gone. She counted the eggs and she kind of panicked. She's like, there are only 11 eggs here. So she went to go talk to Rooster. Well, while she was gone, Black Snake snuck up again. And Black Snake went and he swallowed another egg. And he's like, my plan is working perfectly. 
pretty sure that's exactly how he sounded. And he was patient and he didn't mind waiting and he would slowly just sneak up and get an egg and eat it. And then this time he happened to grab two eggs and he ate both of them and he'd slither away before Chicken would come back. Well, Chicken went to Rooster and she's like, my eggs are disappearing. And Rooster's first thought was, Chicken, are you sure you counted the eggs right? Chicken was like, Rooster, I know how to count. So Rooster came back and counted the eggs and he's like, one, two, three, kind of trailed off and chicken's like what are you afraid to admit I was right and nurse is like no but now there are even less eggs so of course chicken panics and this keeps happening every time chicken would have to get off her nest for whatever reason another egg would disappear so finally chicken only had one egg left and she's worried and she goes and they talk and she and rooster are talking and she's like, I don't have any proof, but I think it's Black Snake who's eating your eggs. And Chicken's like, well, what are we going to do? And Richard's like, well, we have to come up with a plan. Otherwise, he's going to keep eating your eggs every single time you lay them. So they came up with a plan. So the next day, Chicken is guarding her last egg, just like she normally does. She would leave to go eat or whatever chicken business she had to go take care of. And Black Snake snuck up. And he grabbed that last egg and he swallowed it. Now he took those whenever he was eating the eggs, he kind of swallowed them down until he could get them far enough until he could squeeze those eggs and break them with the muscles in his body. But this time the egg wouldn't break. The egg didn't break and he couldn't get it back up and he couldn't get it down. And well, you can kind of imagine what probably happened to him, but nothing good. So chicken comes back and black snake is there and they are looking at him and unfortunately Black Snake is gone because he couldn't get the egg out or down. And Rooster says, how could you have known that that egg was hard boiled? Well, so I guess my question is, I know snakes eat, I thought snakes eat like mice and rats and other rodents, but are there actually snakes out there that eat eggs as part of their diet? And would this trick really have worked? Generally, snakes will eat small mammals such as mice, rats, and rabbits, but they also eat insects, birds, and even other reptiles. Occasionally, there are a few species that will eat an egg if they need to, but it's not a big part of their general diet. However, there are a few species that exclusively, they only eat eggs, like omelette here. This is Omelette. I named her that because she is an African egg-eating snake. She only eats eggs. In fact, she doesn't even have any teeth, so she couldn't eat a mouse or a rat even if she wanted to. What she does is that she will take the egg and she'll swallow it. She'll stretch out. Remember how we learned about how those lower jaws stretch out? She'll stretch out her jaws and be able to swallow the egg. She'll swallow it till it gets to right about here, just a few inches back. You can kind of see this little ridge here if you look really close. And she will take it to right there. And along that ridge, she has bony projections that come off of her spine. And she'll use those to actually crack the shell of the egg. And then she'll kind of wiggle and squirm until she gets all the liquid out of the egg. And that's what she swallows. But she cannot digest the eggshell. So what she'll do is she'll kind of do this wiggle and squirm until she actually regurgitates or basically throws up the eggshell right out of her mouth. And it's pretty gross, but when you see the eggshell, there is absolutely no liquid egg left inside. She gets out every last drop of that egg. And what you can see here on omelet is that she is actually going into shed. I don't know if you can see, but her eyes, they don't look black like normal. They kind of have a grayish bluish tint to them, which kind of makes her look like a little bit of a zombie. And that means she is about to shed her skin. Snakes don't have eyelids like we do. Instead, they have a scale, a clear scale over their eyes that's sometimes called a spectacle. And they shed that scale along with the rest of their shed when they shed their skin. So what happens before they shed is their scale on, their, on top starts to loosen up and she'll kind of get these cloudy eyes like this that makes her look kind of a little intimidating like a zombie and her skin gets a little dull like it is right now. But then as soon as she sheds, she'll be back to looking really pretty again. 
So in the story about this snake that eats the eggs, it is possible that a snake could eat eggs. However, Omelet here would never eat a hard boiled egg. She can actually go up to an egg and use her sense of smell with her tongue to determine if an egg is one, fresh enough, and two, if there's a developing bird inside. Remember, she can only have the liquid part of the egg. So if there's a little tiny baby bird in there about to hatch, she can't eat that egg. And she knows that by just smelling it, that that is not an egg she can eat. So in the story, they could eat eggs, but she wouldn't fall for the trick of the hard boiled egg. All right, now our final snaky story is actually a combination of two. So the first one is all about Medusa. Now Medusa was a gorgon and she had you know, snake like hair and anybody who saw her would get paralyzed or just be killed pretty much instantly. So Athena who was the goddess of wisdom. She found a hero in a guy named Perseus. Now she gave Perseus this really super shiny shield and he used that shield so that he could look in the reflection instead of having to look right at Medusa until he could chop her head off. So he did that and actually Perseus ended up using Medusa's head and mounting it to his shield so that he could paralyze his enemies in battle. And as I was talking about the story of Medusa and learning more and more about that, it also made me think about the basilisk from Harry Potter. So the basilisk is kind of the same thing. They can kill people with just a look or some say their breath. And that's how they kill people. And when you think about Harry Potter, what happened, people only got paralyzed because none of them actually looked directly at that basilisk. So their first one was the cat, Miss Norris. She froze, she was paralyzed because she saw the reflection through the water. And Colin Creevy, he saw this basilisk through his camera and, um, you know, Hermione and Penelope saw the basilisk through a mirror and nearly had the sick. Well, he was already dead, so he was fine. But it was the same reason that Perseus and his shield, where they saw the reflection and that's why they were able to survive the encounters with these creatures that would have otherwise killed them. So I don't suppose, oh, big sister, that you happen to have a basilisk just chilling out over there, maybe? Well, not quite. In the reptile world, a basilisk is actually a green lizard that can run across water. However, I do have Tom here. Tom lives with another one of his kind, I'm not going to tell you exactly what he is yet, named Sal. And I named them after Tom Riddle and Salazar Slytherin from Harry Potter because these guys look an awful lot like the basilisk in Harry Potter. If we look closely at Tom here, we're going to see some things that aren't quite like a snake. I want to see if you guys can look at him with me. First of all, let's look really closely at his eyes. I'm not sure if he's going to blink now, but he actually does have eyelids just like we do. He can close them and open them. And of course, right now he's not wanting to close them for us, but he does have eyelids. And if we look a little bit further back on his head, we can see that tiny little hole there. And that's actually his ear. So if we remember from what we talked about about snakes, snakes don't have ear holes and snakes don't have eyelids like that. So this guy can't be a snake, can he? Another thing he also has is his lower jaw here. Woo! <laughs> he kind of does a death roll when he gets scared. His lower jaw is fixed. Unlike the snakes that can move to accommodate a large food item, he can't do that. He can only open and close his mouth and can only swallow things about as big as his mouth looks right now. So if he has a fixed jaw, he has movable eyelids, he has ear holes, and if we look at his scales, especially here on his belly, they aren't overlapping and he doesn't have those long belly scoots like the snake does. So Tom here, even though he looks an awful lot like a snake and he doesn't have any limbs, he's actually a lizard. This is a European legless lizard. And just like the basilisk in Harry Potter, which also has ear holes and eyelids and a fused jaw, he is a lizard. So the basilisk in Harry Potter is also a lizard, not a snake. Well, I learned a lot about snakes that I certainly never knew before, and I'm so cool to hear about egg-eating snakes and about legless lizards 
and I hope you guys learned something too. And for your craft today, it's a really simple one, guys. It's just the air dry model magic clay. All you have to do is open your package and I want you to make me a snake. Make a snake, make a basilisk, make a gorgon if you really want to. Just make me something out of your clay and we'd love to see pictures of what you create. Know that this is the kind that does dry. So once it's open, try to use it up as quickly as you can. And once it is dry, you can either paint it or color on it with markers. And again, make sure you post those pictures in our comments. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out other videos on our Henderson Library's YouTube. Again, if you haven't signed up for summer reading, you are missing out. So make sure that you do, and we'll see you soon.